Hi, I'm Mark, the electronic engineer, and welcome to my channel. About a year ago, I designed and published my acrylic 14-band spectrum analyzer. It turns out to be very popular, and I know for a fact that more than 40 people already rebuilt it using my hardware plans and uh, coding. Uh, that's really awesome. It gives me a great joy to see that uh, the time and effort I put into this uh, is not in vain, and it's appreciated. And that's really what keeps me uh, keeps me going. So if you like my videos, this would be a good time to uh, click like and to subscribe to my channel. You can even leave a comment below and tell me what I should cover in my next video. And we'll see. Who knows? Um, over the last year, I uh, made some ad some adjustment and fine tuning to my um, design of the analyzer. First of all, I redesigned the PCB, and although the hardware is basically the same, uh, more or less, I redesigned it uh, only for the reason that now uh, I'm able to uh, deliver pre-assembled uh, PCBs. So all you guys who are not that um, skilled or uh, don't have the knowledge to solder up your own PCB, you, you might want to consider buying a pre-assembled PCB. Um, and that was basically the only reason why I redesigned it. Other than that, I, um, I updated the, the firmware, the, the Arduino sketch, and it now includes some um, routines for um, doing some diagnostics on your hardware. So if it's not working, um, there are some uh, extra coding involved to help you diagnose the problem. It's all documented in the documentation on GitHub, so you can find all the information right there. Now, um, I got many feedback from you guys about uh, uh, the, the, the builds you made, and fortunately, most of them uh, work without problems, but some of you had some issues. Uh, most of them were solved because uh, they were minor. Um, Although I did get a lot of feedback about uh, people who bought an MSG EQ7 chip on um, AliExpress and even some local suppliers, and it turns out that most of them were faulty. Uh, I know for a fact there are a lot of fake out there. I don't know why or what's the reason behind it. Um, I even encountered it myself several times, so I never order those chips again on AliExpress because chances are they're fake and not working. I stick to Mauser and um, uh, Sparkfun because those always work. Um, nevertheless, it was reason enough for me to um, to find ways to take the, this analog jock out of the equation completely. Um, so I've been tinkering with this idea to use an, an FFT analysis um, in the microcontroller and do all this uh, spectrum analysis with coding instead of hardware. For those of you who don't know what FFT is, uh, FFT is short for Fast Fourier Transform. And basically it's an algorithm uh, that analyzes data, in this case our audio signal, um, and it calculates all the frequencies that occur in that signal. Um, uh, I'm not going into details on how that works because I know there are a lot of YouTube videos uh, available who do just that and um, they did a great job in doing so, so there's no, really no reason for me to to explain it all again. Uh, what I'm really interested in is to see if I can use it as a replacement for my uh, analog hardware. And um, to do so, I first had to um, clarify the current specifications. Um, so my current design um, has some specs that I want to meet and um, one is that it uses 14 frequency bins. Um, it can be used with the same uh, analyzer setup, meaning I don't want to um, make a new set of tiles uh, of acrylic etc. because that was a lot of work. Um, it should also uh, work with a line-in and a mic-in. And the 
FFT analysis should be as responsive or even better as the version with the analog uh, ICs, the analog chips. Uh, general functions like mode, brightness, peak delay, um, they should all uh, be unchanged. Um, and I should be able to use the same patterns and maybe even extend some. Um, and based on that, I can make a, a proper analysis later if it's suitable or not. Well, using the same uh, LEDs, the W2812 and bodywork, that's not an issue because driving uh, pixel LEDs is a walk in the park for any microcontroller. And the same goes for the general functions uh, because it's just a matter of coding. Uh, regarding the patterns and um, extending the number of patterns, well, that's also a matter of coding and maybe uh, memory limitations, although I don't think we will run out of memory anytime uh, soon. Um, so with that in mind, um, the only thing that's, uh, that might cause some issue is the, the FFT analysis, because the, um, an FFT analysis takes up a lot of uh, calculation power, a lot of mathematics, and the 8-bit microcontroller that I used in my uh, current design simply doesn't cut it. Um, to measure uh, frequencies up to 16 kilohertz, like the analog chip does, uh, we need to be able to use a sample frequency of twice as high, according to the, the formula of Nyquist, which means uh, we need a sample frequency of 32 kilohertz. And furthermore, uh, every time we sample, we need to take approximately 1,000 samples. So uh, those 1,000 samples is to make it accurate enough. And so that means um, at a frequency of 32 kilohertz, we need to take 1,000 samples, more or less. Um, that's a lot of uh, samples in a very short time. And although theoretically that might work on your 8-bit uh, uh, Arduino, um, the response time will be very slow and uh, not very useful. So we won't be able to uh, refresh all the the, um, the lights, all the LEDs uh, on time and it will become very slow in performance. So that's not really an option and I had to look for another microcontroller and although there are many Arduinos out there uh, I use uh, or I just happen to have a lot of uh, ESP32 controllers which are perfect for the job. Uh, not only are they 32 bits instead of 8 bits, they also dual core, uh, 40 megahertz. Uh, and on top of that, they have an onboard Wi Fi and Bluetooth receiver. So, in the future, I might be able to implement some Wi Fi or Bluetooth functionality. The ESP32 is not only very affordable, it's um, a lot cheaper than the standard Arduino most of the time, at least if you order it. Uh, in size like AliExpress, and yes, um, those are not fake. I mean, none of my experience uh, worked out just fine. Um, the main question is, can I use it the way I want? And can I uh, use this ESP32 with an FFT library to replace my current analog hardware? Uh, so to test that, I uh, rewrote the uh, code completely. I implemented um, pixel matrix, so you will be able to uh, use different displays in the future and basically the framework uh, for both setups is the same one setup uses the fft library and the other setup uses the frequency board with the two msg analog chips um, other than that all the framework is the same so we can do a, a, a good side-to-side -side comparison and uh, um, i did recordings for using the mic in and it recordings using the line in so we can compare both. I did run into some, some issues with the um, uh, FFT on the ESP32 because every time the input signal was uh, too strong uh, that would result in uh, false positive on nearby frequency containers. Uh, at some point even all bands light up uh, because the signal uh, on the input was too strong. So I looked again at the datasheet of the 
analog chip, the MSG EQ7, and turns out those are specified for a line input signal of 0.3 volt peak peak. Um, so I did a little adjustment to my hardware on the USB32 and I used a voltage divider on the input and I based all on the same uh, input signal 0.3 volt peak peak at side of the microcontroller. Um, and that solved most of the problem. Another issue uh, that I had was that the frequency bins of the, the analog chip are quite solid uh, and they're fixed and for the FFT I can adjust that in the library and for now I, uh, I chose frequencies that are close to the ones of the MSG uh, close to the ones of the, the MSG EQ7 analog chip but they're not spot on so as you can see in the video, at some point, some containers are a bit off in frequency. You can see that with the frequent doing the frequency sweep. But it's okay for now. Uh, you can adjust it easily in the in the firmware of the FFT parameters. Um, so I made a video in which you can see all four, and you can judge for yourself. Um, on a personal note, I'm very pleased with the result and uh, I think I will continue uh, fine-tuning this so I will implement that in a future release of the Spectrum Analyzer. So there you have it, um, FFT versus analog MSG EQ7 chips. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you do please click like and don't forget to subscribe, um, in that case you won't miss out on uh, future releases of the new firmware for this uh, uh, Spectrum Analyzer and of course all the other videos to come. Um, for now, um, I'll give you a little preview of the new uh, firmware I'm working on, in which you can see some of the new uh, modes that are available on the uh, Spectrum Analyzer. Enjoy! <laughs>